In the early days, there were bands around in Dublin who were at least as good as U2, if not better. And in the early days, I don't think U2 were necessarily that great. A lot of people say, but they had an energy off them, they had a vibe off them, absolutely true. There's no question that U2 wanted it more than the other bands. Every band wanted it, but U2 were prepared to do something about it. And I'm going to be perfectly honest, and they've been one of the first to admit this, they were lucky in some ways too. They had a very good manager who made the right decisions at the right time on how to go to America, how to bypass London. You could say, oh, but they had the talent, they had the talent. Of course they had the talent. I'm still convinced there'll be other bands out there who might have had the talent too if they also got the breaks and the chances, or if they made their own breaks and chances. They didn't. Hard luck. U2 did. U2 started off as awful and learned how to be great at being good and sometimes good at being great. At the beginning they really were pretty crap. They had a very interesting guitar player and that was about it. But what really made U2 happen was their attitude. They really wanted it very badly and they have managed by doggedness and bloody-mindedness and ferocious ambition out of which was born a very unusual and unique talent. The winner is, of course, um, that most brilliant of bands in the world today, U2, for the unforgettable power. It seems odd, I suppose, at 25 to, uh, to be seen by someone as an established group, but uh, there are younger bands that are rising up and are fit to take tonight's award, but we're not going to make it easier for them by uh, letting go of our own music. So they're going to have to be good over the next few years. Bono and U2 show up just how superficial the world is. That Bono's particular brand of bullshit managed to take in popes and princesses. Everybody. What is it about? They have mirrored Irish society for so long at this stage, you know, for 25 odd years that sometimes you two have led and Irish society has followed, sometimes Irish society has led and you two have followed, but there is a sort of, a, you know, a, a relationship at this stage where we, we go together, you know, and it's sort of, regardless of, of what happens in the world, you two have, or, or in Ireland, you two have a take on it. I mean, people are calling it the money tree, you know what I mean? I mean, look, at it's like this, Dave, by the time you pay the road crew, by the time... Don't give me this. <laughs> Uh, no, no, the road crew worth every bit of money. No, I mean, it's just, it's all exaggerated. All, it's all exaggerated, all the money. Yeah. Where, where am I getting me wages, Paul? Oh, <laughs> back to bed, Clayton. <laughs> When they made it, they, they didn't stop searching. They kept trying to, you know, they kept exploring. They kept their curiosity. They kept searching for more and more and more. And they're still doing it. They're still searching. Like, Bono has become quite an extraordinary phenomenon in this country. He's like a force of nature. He, in ways, he represents us and he represents things we like and hate about ourselves and everything. And, you know, it's just, it's quite, it's quite an amazing thing that, that, um, and I don't think we've ever had anybody who was as truly representative of us as him and anybody who's been so important, really, to the country. That's right. I was a boy. If you look back on, on, on the moments that you two have given us, the funny thing is that a lot of the time they're not about music, you know, and they're generally probably about Bono talking or Bono pulling a stunt or whatever. But um, they've always been very much part of of us. I know that sounds a bit soppy and everything, but, but it's the truth and, I mean, was there ever anything more exciting on the news than when, for example, Bono arriving with some lambs into Stevens Green, right? And you're thinking on one hand, stop, man, stop. But um, there was also the, the idea that that's Bono, he's the most famous singer in the world, but he's down in Stevens Green and RT are the only camera there as well and, you know, it's uh, having our own superstar. Dublin City is about... <laughs> Tolerance, and um, we want to extend that to the. Uh, we want to set some sheep free. They've been on a long, strange trip over the last 25 years, but somehow they're still recognisable as the young band who went into Studio Two to record their first TV gig on RT's Young Line back in 1978.